Hello and welcome back to another exciting edition of Parry This Alternate History. Today we delve into the thrilling blend of history and speculative fiction as we explore a unique hypothetical scenario. Imagine if we could traverse the streams of time and alter the course of pivotal moments in history. Our focus? The legendary Battle of Little Bighorn, a defining engagement in the American Old West. But in a twist of historical fantasy, what if we added a modern element to this 19th century battlefield? Picture this. 50 American Special Forces soldiers, battle-hardened veterans of the Vietnam War, suddenly find themselves transported back to June 25th, 1876, to join forces with the U.S. Cavalry under Colonel Custer's command. The Battle of Little Bighorn, often remembered as Custer's Last Stand, was a significant event in the American Old West. It saw the United States Army under the leadership of Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer, engaged in a fierce battle with the American Indian forces, including the Lakota Sioux, the Northern Cheyenne, and the Arapaho. This confrontation was a critical chapter in the broader conflicts over land and cultural rights between the U.S. government and the American Indian tribes. In this journey of historical reimagination, we will speculate how the addition of Vietnam-era Green Berets equipped with their 20th century tactics and technology might have altered the course of this 19th century battle. Join us as we blend different eras in the, an exploration of military strategy, technology, and the unpredictable nature of historical events. Background. The Battle of Little Bighorn. The Battle of Little Bighorn, etched deeply into the annals of American history, stands as a symbol of resistance and a testament to the complex conflicts of the 19th century American frontier. It took place on June 25th and 26th, 1876 near the Little Bighorn River in eastern Montana Territory. This battle was part of the Great Sioux War of 1876 to 1877, a series of conflicts between the United States and several American Indian tribes, including the Lakota Sioux, Northern Cheyenne, and Arapaho tribes. At the heart of this battle were key figures whose names have become synonymous with this era. Leading the U.S. forces was Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer, commanding the 7th Cavalry Regiment. Custer, known for his bold and often reckless tactics, faced a formidable formidable coalition of American Indian tribes. Among the tribal leaders, Sitting Bull, a Hunk Papa Lakota leader, and Crazy Horse, and Oglala Lakota War leader, stood out for their leadership and strategic acumen. Custer's force, numbering around 600 to 700 men, was primarily equipped with Springfield single-shot carbines and Colt 45 revolvers. In a decision that would later be questioned, Custer chose not to include the more powerful Gatling guns in his arsenal. Opposing him were an estimated 1,500 to 2,500 American Indian warriors. These warriors, armed with a mix of traditional weapons like bows and arrows, spears, and of course firearms, including repeating rifles obtained through trade, held a significant advantage in manpower and firepower. The tactical situation of the battle was complex and fraught with misjudgments. Custer's strategy to surprise the American Indian camp led him to divide his forces into three battalions. This decision, coupled with his underestimation of the enemy's strength, set the stage for the disastrous outcome. Major Reno's battalion, attacking first, faced fierce resistance and was forced into a hasty retreat. Captain Benteen's battalion joined Reno, and together they formed a defensive position. Meanwhile, Custer and his battalion moved north to engage the American Indian forces. Outnumbered and outgunned, they faced an onslaught that led to the complete annihilation of Custer's command. The aftermath of the battle was a grim tally for the United States Army, with 268 fatalities, including Custer himself, and 55 wounded. The American Indian forces suffered estimated casualties ranging from 36 to 136 killed and 160 wounded. Despite being a tactical victory for the American Indian tribes, showcasing their fighting spirit and tactical skills, the battle had far-reaching consequences. It intensified the United States military's campaign against the tribes, ultimately leading to their surrender and relocation. Background: Vietnam-era Green Berets In 1964, the Green Berets, officially known as the United States Army Special Forces, Forces represented the pinnacle of unconventional warfare expertise within the U.S. military. The selection of 50 of these elite soldiers for our hypothetical scenario is not arbitrary. It is rooted in their unique capabilities and adaptability, traits essential for the challenging environment of the Battle of Little Bighorn. The Green Berets of this era were rigorously trained in a wide array of warfare tactics. They specialized in guerrilla warfare, counterinsurgency, and direct action missions, skills that would be 
invaluable in the rugged, open terrain of the Little Bighorn Battlefield. Their training in unconventional warfare meant they were adept at adapting to various combat situations, an ability that would allow them to effectively engage in a 19th century battle using 20th century tactics and technology. The composition of this elite unit would consist of approximately 40 soldiers armed with M16 rifles or CAR-15 commando rifles. These weapons offered a rate of fire of about 700 to 950 rounds per minute and an effective accurate firing range of up to 460 meters. Each rifleman would carry approximately 200 to 300 rounds of 5.56 millimeter ammunition, striking a balance between firepower and mobility. A small team of six soldiers equipped with M79 grenade launchers providing the capability to engage targets with high explosive rounds at distances of up to 400 meters. They would carry around 36 to 48 rounds of 40 millimeter grenades, ensuring ample firepower for suppressing enemy forces. A select few, around four soldiers, armed with M40 sniper rifles. These weapons boasted remarkable accuracy and could engage targets at ranges exceeding 800 meters. Each sniper would carry approximately 80 to 100 rounds of 7.62 millimeter ammunition. The Green Beret's non-combat equipment would include portable radios for maintaining communication within the unit, maps, compasses for navigation, basic survival gear, tailored to the Montana landscape, and medical supplies for field care. This self-sufficiency would be critical in a scenario where resupply was not an option. The choice of Green Berets for this mission is anchored in their multi-dimensional warfare capabilities, their ability to operate independently, adapt to various combat environments, and utilize advanced tactics and weaponry makes them the ideal candidates for a mission that transcends time and radically different warfare contexts. The Hypothetical Scenario Green Berets at the Battle of Little Bighorn as the morning sun casts long shadows over the Little Bighorn River Valley, the combined forces of the 7th Cavalry and the 50 Vietnam-era Green Berets stood ready for battle. The Green Berets, with their advanced tactical training and modern weaponry, had been seamlessly integrated into the existing command structure, a unique blend of 20th century expertise and 19th century cavalry. Tactical Positioning The strategic decision was made to maintain the high ground advantage that the 7th Cavalry had chosen historically. However, this time, the position would be fortified and extended, taking full advantage of the modern weaponry and tactics at the disposal of the Green Berets. Riflemen's Superior Firepower The 40 Green Beret riflemen armed with M16 rifles took their positions alongside the cavalry troopers. Their weapons offered a substantially higher rate of fire and accuracy compared to the muskets and carbines of the 7th Cavalry. With their increased firepower, they were tasked with suppressing enemy movements and engaging targets at longer ranges. As the American Indian warriors approached, the riflemen unleashed controlled bursts of automatic fire, devastating the charging forces. The accuracy and rate of fire of the M16s allowed them to engage targets at ranges far beyond the capabilities of their 19th century counterparts. This withering fire disrupted the initial American Indian charges, causing chaos among the ranks. Grenade launchers create havoc. The Green Beret team, armed with M79 grenade launchers, position themselves strategically, ready to unleash a storm of explosive firepower upon the approaching enemy. As the warriors closed in, the grenade launchers delivered precise, high high explosive rounds into their formations. The devastating impact of the explosions created confusion and disarray among the American Indian forces, further slowing their advance. Snipers Precise Elimination The Green Beret snipers, armed with M40 rifles, took up concealed positions on the high ground. Their exceptional accuracy and long-range capabilities allowed them to selectively target key enemy leaders, including Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse. With well-aimed shots, these leaders fell, causing a leadership vacuum among the American Indian Indian forces. Integrated Cavalry Charges With the initial American Indian charges disrupted and their leadership in chaos, the 7th Cavalry, supported by the Green Berets, launched coordinated cavalry charges. These charges utilized the traditional tactics and mobility of the cavalry, enhanced by the devastating firepower of the M16 rifles. The Green Berets' suppressive fire cleared the way for the cavalry to close in quickly, taking advantage of the shock and awe factor of their modern weapons. Ammunition Constraints The limited ammunition carried by the Green Berets was a critical factor in this engagement. Knowing they couldn't call for resupply, they carefully conserved their rounds, making each shot count. Enemy retreat and pursuit. As the battle unfolded, the combined firepower of the 7th Cavalry and the Green Berets proved overwhelming. The American Indian warriors facing not only cavalry charges, but also modern automatic weapons fire, grenades, and precision snipers found their advance halted and their morale shattered. In the end, the American Indian forces were forced into a chaotic retreat, pursued by cavalry and Green Berets was relentless, resulting in the capture of key enemy leaders and the scattering of the remaining warriors. Victory and its implications.
nations. The Battle of Little Bighorn had ended very differently from the historical account. With the tactical advantage provided by the Green Berets' modern weaponry and expertise, the 7th Cavalry emerged victorious. The implications of this victory were profound. It not only secured the defeat of the American Indian Alliance, but also sent a clear message to other tribes resisting westward expansion. The American Indian Resistance Movement was dealt a severe blow, leading to increased momentum in favor of the United States' westward expansion. In this hypothetical scenario, we explored a unique intersection of history and modern warfare. The arrival of 50 Vietnam-era Green Berets at the Battle of Little Bighorn reshaped the course of the conflict, highlighting the significant impact that a small, well-equipped, and highly trained force can have on the outcome of a historical battle. The integration of the Green Berets' modern weaponry, advanced tactics, and expertise into the 7th Cavalry's ranks allowed for a more decisive victory against the American Indian forces. The combination of accurate and rapid-fire rifles, grenade launchers, snipers, and disciplined cavalry charges created a formidable force that disrupted enemy advances, shattered morale, and led to the capture of key enemy leaders. While this hypothetical scenario provides an intriguing glimpse into what could have been, it's essential to remember that history unfolds through a complex interplay of factors, including politics, culture, and unforeseen events. Battles are but one piece of a larger historical puzzle, and while they can shape the course of events, they are influenced by numerous other factors. The Battle of Little Bighorn, in reality, remains a historical event with its own significance and impact. This scenario serves as a thought experiment, offering a unique perspective on the potential consequences of a different set of circumstances. History is a tapestry of the past, and exploring these what-if scenarios allows us to better understand the dynamics that have shaped our world. But that does it for today. In any case, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next battlefield.